Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. So today I'm back with another movie review. So this was another one from Lifetime. Yes, Lifetime be having the movies at the moment. So this one is called Girl and Shed. Um, the Abby Hernandez story based on a true story. Yes, I'm loving these true story movies because it really gives you an insight of what that person endured and if they live to see another day, basically. So, if y'all watched it, please make sure you like, um, hit that subscribe button, hit the notification bell so you can be notified every time I upload, and we're going to get on into it. So, basically, um, it starts off with her at the time, Abby, she's 14 years old, and, you know, you know, at that time, you know, kids start wanting their own little independence, and then they want their parents to be on their back like that. So, she ends up waking up late for school. She picked picked through some stuff. She ended up wearing her new boots, but she couldn't get her socks. So she was already running late. So she didn't even get a chance to eat breakfast or nothing. So her mother was trying to help her out or whatever. So she ends up leaving the house, getting ready to go catch the bus. She ends up missing the bus. As the time she turns back around to walk back to her house, her mom leaves. And, you know, she's stuck. So she ends up walking to school without no socks. Because they're brand new shoes she had, so she had to break them in. So she ends up seeing one of her her neighbors, and they end up driving her to school. So she gets to school and whatnot. And during um around lunchtime, her mom comes to the school and brings her her socks. And she was like, "Thank you so much." Um, after that, she continues out with school. Um, she hangs out with her friends for a little bit. And then it's um time for dismissal. So she gets ready to leave. She misses the bus again. It's like she wasn't having a great day at all. She should have just stayed home and, you know, thought about it the next day. But she starts walking home again. And hitchh hitchhiking is not good. But we're going to get on to this. So she ends up walking home. So she's, like, in the in the woods in the back way as if going to her house. And this car comes out of nowhere, and he he has the door open like, can I give you a ride? I mean, she's not thinking nothing of it. She was like, okay, sure. I mean, because she probably had a long distance to walk. Obviously, if she's taking the bus, it's a long way from her house to her school. So she didn't think nothing of it. So she was like, as they were driving, was like, she was like, you can drop me off to this sandwich stop close by her house because, you know, you do not want no grown man knowing where you live and you're at, you're 14. But he didn't. He said, I'm going to stop at the store. He didn't stop at the store. He basically took her to his house and had her chained up. Before he took her to the house, he stopped at the store because he said had to go to the store. But instead of going where the parking lot is, he parked off along the side, like in the back where you can't really see nothing. And he get he puts a gun to her and is like, listen, if you do this, I'm going to kill you. I'm going to blow your head off. He ended up getting her his hat and to her, don't make a sound. So he ended up driving her to his house. And that's where he um strips her of her clothes that she wore. Um, He ties her to a bed and said, you cannot make no sound or whatever. So she's basically calm, but she's like going through it. Her mind is probably racing. It's like... How did I get myself into this situation? So he has a chain up to the bed while he goes out and do some things. And then he eventually comes back. And he just like, he basically just torments her. And if he didn't like what she said, he stun gunned her. Hold on. Sorry about that. So yeah, if he didn't like what she said, he stun gunned her. So basically he stun gunned her for 20 minutes while she's just laying on the bed crying. Um, and I believe he raped her, but they didn't really get into too much detail about that. So basically he did what he wanted with her. And then she was basically at his every beck and call. So as the, as the days progress, her mom, her mom figured out she didn't come home, um, within three hours or not going, um, coming home from school. And she goes and starts calling everybody. She goes to the police station and they put out a, a bulletin to see if, you know, if keep an eye on her. If they do come across her, you know, let her know. And, you know, let her mom know. So, the next day comes. So, she ends... Ooh. 
<laughs> the next day comes, so the detective actually gets in contact with her. She calls her ex-husband. She calls her friends, mom, and them, and they all start coming together to, like, figure out what really happened to her. Um, after that, time went past. People started, you know, really taking into consideration that she's really missing. So they started doing, putting up flyers, putting up a bulletin board. And then I think it's like, let me see, one, two, three, four, five, like five, four or five months in. Supposedly, the guy, she ended up giving him the name of, of Felix at the time. Um, He has her write a... A note to her parent, to her mom, basically saying that she's okay and that she's unharmed. So with that, with them doing so, him telling that he's trying to throw off the investigation that he, he's not, he don't, so nobody can't find her. So basically, his plan was to basically keep her for as many months or years that he could keep her for. So he ends up driving a, a little ways out of town to get the mail delivered, and it goes to her mom's house. The mom ends up opening in the mail while she's on the phone with her her ex-husband, and she reads it, and then they end up going to the police station, and supposedly somebody ended up leaking the letter, and then everybody just turned on her. They thought her daughter was a liar. She ran off and got pregnant. She's doing all this stuff, you know, that rebel teens do when they feel like they don't need to listen to their parents, and everybody just went, they was here. And then they was there. They went, they just turned, they did a whole 360 on her. She started getting all these hate mails, all these threatening phone calls. And she, her mother was just tired of it. They was at her house, harassing her. Like, listen, you just, it was just too much. Then, um, he had her basically started, um, producing and bagging a weed, like do a weed business, um, at his job. He worked, I think, a mechanic or somewhere in the construction. Felix, um, his co-workers got tired of him because he was talking about all these comp conspiracy theory about, like, the war and bombs and stuff like that. And they was tired of it. So, eventually, the boss was, like, gave him a warning at one point. And then, you know, it was either him or the co-workers leave. So, they gave the boss gave him a warning. And, you know, he basically took out his anger and frustration on on Abby, because she was contained in his house. So he ended up building her some space in the shed, which had, like, tools and stuff like that. He had, like, a bed and stuff in there. Then he also wanted to wear a mask so that she couldn't um see his face. But what I don't understand is, I don't know how she, how she didn't see his face when she got in his car to the point that he started to wear a mask when she got to his, once she got to his house. Like, that part I didn't really understand, but, hey, I digress. So, after he started doing the weed, um, doing the weed, he ends up losing his job. So, after doing that, he figured out a way, oh, let's start making money. So, he started making counterfeit money with the help of her. And he's like has his obsession. He's on his um computer looking at some sites for women. I guess he was going through some going through some women troubles, and he was basically having the girl there to do whatever he wanted to do. So after doing that, they made the money. He ends up going out of town to like a bar or whatever. Hold on. Yeah, he ends up going to a bar. And he ends up using some of the counterfeit money that he had. So the stripper or whatever called the police and like, listen, I'm going to tell them everything. So they, he goes to the police and he figured that out. He ends up going to start getting rid of some stuff, like clean up the house or whatever so that nobody could come there. Oh, I missed the part. I'll backtrack it. So, yeah, they started cleaning up the house, whatever. So, another incident where he's, um, he had to go to the police station for something. As doing so, he ends up hitting this, 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 hold on, wait. He ends up hitting this car. 
And then the girl, you know, he ended up going to the police station to tell his side of the, side of the story. And, you know, I guess he got released from jail or something else, some type of incident he did or whatever beforehand. And he told his story and the officer was like, okay, we got, we got, we, we got this document. Just can't get into no more trouble. Um, after that, they, they also had held a visual for her and he was there. Like he was there to like, to do what? You ain't helping nothing. You just there to like show face. And what he also did was, which I found, which is horrible. He like took like the clippings and stuff and posters and he gave it to Abby as when he came home. So, backtrack. Um, after the um stripper said that she was going to call the call the police, he goes home and Abby's there and he has them he has to give away his take his guns out of his house so that he won't be in no more trouble. So he takes his guns out, they come to the house, they start looking at the shed or whatever, but they didn't think nothing of it. I kinda thought they were gonna have like a shoot out there, but he complied, gave away the guns, and so like that. So then, uh, the stripper incident where they were going to come to the house, um, he ends up wiping everything down. She had, like, some, she had something that she put in her hair that I guess had her DNA on it, but she had left it in the bathroom. So after they wiped everything down with bleach or whatever, um, they end up, he ended up having her to get um dressed back in the clothes that he, he kidnapped to him. And then he left the house. So after doing that, he drives off into the woods and then he lets her out of the car. I thought he was going to kill her, but he didn't. Thank God he didn't. So she ends up finding her way back home. She looks so dirty, lost, shooken, scared out of her mind. But she ends up making it back home to her house. And then she opens the door. She's like, hello. Her mom, she never gave up, never, never gave up sight and faith. Even though when she felt like she was losing it, her mama didn't lose sight. She wanted her daughter home, and that's what she got. So her mom greets her at the house, and then I guess the cops storm in at his house, and you know they get him. So she was kidnapped and held hostage at his house for a total of nine to ten months. She basically missed her 15th birthday. So she was scarred. Like, I'm proud of her because she was able to stay calm. She used his kindness to help her get in with him so that she can build up enough um knowledge about him. She ended up figuring out his real name. His real name was Nate Kirby, but he wanted to be called Kirby. So that's what she called him at the time. So he ends up going to jail. She tells her story. It was horrible what he did to her. He, yeah, the whole nine, it was just horrible. So this is based on the true story. The real girl, Abby, she tells us her story behind the headlines. That the torment that she went through was horrible. But she still made it out. I'm surprised she didn't have to go through therapy. I don't know if she did or not. But, yeah, she says the ordeal was horrible. But she's glad she was alive. She's happy. She now has a three-year-old son. She has a boyfriend. She's living her best life. She's And she also um, followed her dream into becoming a hairdresser. That movie was good, but it was also sad because it was like he really put her through so much pain. If he didn't like what she had to say, oh, he he, he stunned on her for real. Like, he had made her wear a shock collar too, so you could see, like, the bruising on her neck. Like, he, he yeah, nine to ten months. Like, I wonder if he actually lived in the same area as them or he lived, like, out of, out of you know how they do the counties? Like, if he lived in another county or whatever, but it was crazy. Y'all gotta check it out. Y'all can also check it out on Lifetime.com and also the Lifetime app as always, I tell y'all. So guys, if y'all enjoyed this recap, I know it's kind of all over the place, but I got to the great points. <laughs> I got to the great points. So she came home alive and well. That's all that matters. She was alive and well and nothing bad really happened to her. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed. Please give it a like. 
Um, hit that subscribe button, hit the notification bell so you can notify every time I upload. And I will see y'all in the next one. Bye.